Um, so thank you to all of you who are here. Um, revolutions of tomorrow. Um, Inevitably, as we have heard earlier in this TED series, um, we think about the digital revolution, we think about uh, content delivery systems, we think about big data, and we get scared. Um, but we also think about um, our iPads in our classrooms and our smart boards in our classrooms, um, and we hope that the revolution to come, which we know will involve AI, um, won't rob us of our humanity. Um, and so I'm here today to talk about a revolution in the classroom that might ensure that our classrooms are spaces where our humanity is enhanced and where rather than thinking about content delivery, we think about the content that we can produce, teachers with our students in the classrooms, and that this, in fact, might ensure that despite all the digital changes to come, that the work that we do helps set the stage for a better tomorrow. So, um, what am I speaking of specifically, given the fact that I am an English language teacher here at EIB, and that for more than 10 years, I won't tell you how much more than 10 years, I have been teaching English to students whose native language is not necessarily English, actually in many cases whose native language is not English. Um, many of them speak French at home as a primary language. Others speak um, Arabic, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and the list goes on. Um, so what can we do um, when teaching English to speakers of other languages that in fact helps build the kind of classroom where our humanity is placed at the center? So. I would like to postulate that one of the things that is a very interesting method that I have been putting in place now for more than 10 years um, is the use of narrative writing, that is creative writing, memoir writing, when working with non-native speakers. And it's a little bit of a revolution because traditionally, I say traditionally, um, it has been mm, considered that how can you have someone who doesn't master English start writing stories in English? Um, but I actually believe that story writing is essential to investing oneself in a language, to claiming ownership over that language, and to feeling that even if you were not born in that language, there's a reason for you to get really good at it if you can tell the stories of your own life. And therefore, the language becomes yours. You kind of reprogram your imagination, you expand your imagination to include more than the language that is your mother tongue. And in so doing, your horizon is broadened and your place in the world as well. Um, so maybe before I go into this, two things about me. Um, the whole issue of using narrative writing, memoir writing, to revolutionize classrooms, I'll be very honest, it's not incredibly new. Um, when I was um, living and studying in New York City, I worked with Lucy Calkins and the Writing Project at Columbia Teachers College in the 1990s, um, and there we went um, to work w hand in hand with teachers in the New York public school system to do research on how can we use narrative writing and memoir writing to help transform the teaching of English. And that research resulted in some um, relatively definitive work on the fact that it's very important for students to be given the opportunity to tell the stories of their own lives, to feel that language matters to them 
because it places them at the center of the stories they tell. And that that's an act of self-empowerment that is an essential part of teaching a young person to understand the world around them. Um, so I did that work with Lucy and the results were um, a book called The Art of Teaching Writing. Um, but uh, one of the things that always intrigued me was this issue of can we do this with students whose, whose principal language is not English? And because of who I am, this question really, really mattered to me. So let me digress for a second and tell you a little bit more about me. Um, so I am a novelist and I write in English but my mother is French and my father is Moroccan. Um, so I grew up in a household that spoke French, uh, that spoke Arabic, that spoke English, but honestly, um, I know this is going to go out over the internet and never be taken back, but the truth of the matter is my mother can't write m read my stuff in English, she has to read it once it's been translated. So obviously English wasn't the language I used with my mom, um, or under special circumstances. Um, so that's my background, and yet my imagination is something that I trained and developed in English. So you won't be surprised if I've been thinking a lot about, well, how do we do this with other students or young people? How do we train them to broaden their imagination to include English. Um, and this is where I think narrative writing and memoir writing is extremely important. Now, at EIB, I was given a gift, and that gift was to follow the very same students from sixth grade all the way through to 12th grade and to have them write and write and write um, from their lived experiences with the hopes that they would become near native speakers. Um, and the results have been extraordinary. Uh, I must admit that um, it, many of the things, some of the students I think are out in the audience right now, those who have been in my writing workshops, um, but it, it, it has been an extraordinary experience to see how successful this process has been. So the question is how is it done? Um, very quickly, the how of it is using the basic building blocks of story, character, plot, and setting, giving students writer's notebooks like a real writer might, and having them actually start by projecting their mind back to their earliest memories, things they have experienced in languages that are not English, and then finding the words to try and tell those stories, and therefore going back and reprogramming their own life experience to include, yes, their, their mother tongue and more, and in this case, English. Um, then, of course, the, the real um, hard work that all narrative writing requires is done, the editing, the re-editing, the drafting, um, and, and ultimately also, sharing with one's peers. But one of the super important things in this process, and some of my students might remember this, it was a question I always ask when you go back as a student and look at your earliest memories. Then you think about in life, was there a moment where there was a turning point, where suddenly something changed dramatically? Um, and the drama can be big or small, but what we're looking at are moments where life turns. And writing about that becomes an act of making meaning of your own life experience. And that's where suddenly the language becomes yours. And so then we, we have fashioned stories that we've shared with many in the EIB community, and I'm delighted that things evolved beyond my wildest imaginations. Students in my writing workshops then said, you know, we need a literary review in the 
indigenous community. And we now have a literary review that is in fact registered with La Bibliothèque Nationale Française. Um, and so we have established that writing is a part of the way in which we make sense of our lived experiences. And that in fact enhances our humanity. It also, and I see it with all of the students in front of us today, makes that students are able to go out into the world. They know how to express their deepest desires, their intense passions, their ideas, and they want to take action on the world and make it turn, make it shift. And therefore, we have classrooms where we don't lose our humanity, where in fact we enhance it. And we believe that tomorrow is within our grasp to shape and change. So my encouragement to all those of you who teach languages or who want to learn a new language, um, for those who teach languages, yes, creative writing, narrative writing is an essential part of the act of teaching language so that a student may be empowered to feel like this language is theirs. I always say, English I took not from my mother nor from my father, but it is mine. So I think that as, as teachers of language, that's what we're looking for students to do. And then the other thing um, is that I, I just want to to remind all of you of the power of story. That as human beings, I think we, we, we package meaning into bite-sized um, portions that we can uh, then understand something about our place in the world. And that meaning um, we share with each other principally through story. So voila. Um, I'm delighted that at EIB this culture has thrived and um, I think that as a teacher I too have learned an enormous amount from my students and I think that's also what happens when we have classrooms where our humanity is enhanced. Thank you to all of you.